Let me welcome to Phil Linert. Welcome to the Skylab. Oh. How are you doing? All right? Yeah, good. Right now, you're single. Is it number 18 with Gary Moore? I mean, out in the field, that must be amazing for you. Yeah, considering really... it's only had two weeks, yeah. It's yeah, really it's flown in, hasn't it? Yeah. Now, I mean, how did that come about? I mean, who decided that you should work with Gary Moore? And how did it come around? Um, well, you may or may not know that me and Gary were, we were in Lizzie together. Yeah. Right? Then we we fell apart. There was a big row. Yeah. And stuff. Anyway, the, the argument was made up and um, uh, I asked him to play on the Lizzie Farewell shows uh, in, in Hammersmith. So, consequently, after that, he asked me then to play with him in Belfast. Oh, I see, yeah. During his recent tour, because they were doing a documentary. And I, I jumped up and played Parisian Railways and a couple of other mm, things. Lovely, yeah. And um, then after that, the ma his management seen us on stage together, and we do work well together, me and Gary. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they said, uh, why don't you record something together? And Gary had a song and I had a song uh, and his mum was out in the fields and mine was the military man which is the other side of the record. Right. So um, we got together and we recorded it. Are you pleased? Yeah. You must be. Is it yeah. going to be a follow-up do you think? I think, you know, if, uh, because of the success of this one I'm sure the management will uh, find a way. They must do. They must do. Finding space. I mean me and Gary enjoy working together. I mean we couldn't work together on a permanent basis. No? But no. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I think when we do work together, every time we have worked together, we've had a hit record. So yeah. So I maybe think, an album then? Well, at, but at this rate, we should come up with a, an album of hits. You know, and, uh, there's, a, there's a few. We've done Parisians and mm. Sarah and a couple on Black yeah. Rose. And well, let, let's have a look at your hit single out in the fields. Here it is now, Gary Moore, Phil Liner. Lynott and Gary Moore and out in the field and I'm talking to Phil Lynott. So what happened to the band Grand Slam that you formed after St. Lizzie? Um, I was forced to go solo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the thing was that we ran out of money, I think. Yeah. Uh, we were looking around for a deal and uh, it just, it seemed to take ages for us to get a deal. So we, we ran out of money. Mm. So next of all, I went off to America to do something with Huey Lewis. Yeah. And uh, when I came back, I read in all the newspapers that uh, two of the guys had left and it was difficult oh, to get on with and stuff like that. So You mustn't believe everything you read in the papers, though. I think I had to, considering that we were supposed <laughs> to be gigging the next night, you know. So the rumours about you going solo are true? You are... Yeah, forced yeah. to go solo, yeah. What about live gigs for you? I mean, any any sort of coming up? Um, I've been offered a few. I was offered that Nabworth one. Mm. Have I farmed a band together? Mm. But I think... Um, the thing about Grand Slam was when Thin Lizzy uh, broke up, I thought I should definitely get back on the road because I wanted to prove to myself that I could play live. Yeah, quite. Well, I did that now, so I, I think I should actually get an album together first mm. and then I'll, then I'll get a band together. Do you ever regret the decision to split Thin Lizzy? Uh, yeah, sort of. You know, it's, a, it's like a girlfriend. Mm. You know, I'm, I, I mean, I couldn't go back to her, but, yeah. you know, I enjoyed being with her at the time. So. But you've been successful since anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, have. Yeah, sure. Great. All right, after the next video, we're going to get Neil and Mick back and we'll have a, we'll have a chinwag, dear. All right, so stay okay. with us. I got As the promised, for it. <laughs> at last, here's the kiss, thrills in the night. Kiss and thrills in the night, and here we are all together, Phil Lineup, Mick Wall and Neil Murray. All right, lads, tell me, apart from being bass players, you've both got a lot in common. For instance, Gary was in Thin Lizzy, Phil, and uh, you've been part of the Gary Moore band. Tell me, Neil, how do you rate the uh, Phil and Gary single, Out in the Field? I think it's great. I also like the B-side, the, the one that Phil wrote, because he tends to write songs from a, a sort of a bass player's approach. I mean, I can really relate to it, you know. They're, I mean, slightly more rhythmic, more, more, uh, more American... R and B, yeah, slightly funkier. Mm. I mean, I, I, I think they they bring out something in each other. And Maybe you're not it's saying any of this because he's sitting here, right? <laughs> oh, Whoops. Phil, pretend he's, Neil's he's not here. He's only dropping his, <laughs> his radio mic. Don't worry. Easy, Phil. Easy. He likes it really. Phil, pretend Neil's not here and, and tell me honestly, Alan, how do you rate him as a bass player? Oh yeah, one of the here. best. <laughs> 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 he's going ten pounds. <laughs> Now the thing about Neil's playing is that um, he, he always sneaks up on you. you. Everybody I've worked with have said, you know, if they're looking for a bass player, Neil's name always comes up. Mm. And then you're always checking the back of your album sleeves 
of albums you like and Neil's playing it there and when you do check his bass playing the interesting thing the thing I like most about it is, is his sound and the way he plays yeah. always complements who he's playing behind I mean he'll play simple when it's a lead guitar solo so that your concentration is on the solo and of course if there's a difficult riff in there he has the ability to play all the fast yeah. stuff but also but, you know, I have to say that when people occasionally say can you play in a different style the person who they say can you play like is al almost always Phil oh really or not really Phil tell me and after Neil said that tell me I mean Neil gets a lot of work outside of Whitesnake as a session man he's recently played with Randy California on his album he's got this phenomena thing happening Do, does anybody ever have the cheek to ring up and hire you and say come and play the bass we don't want the singing we just want the four strings mm -hmm. uh, nobody asks me to play the bass because Neil's got all the jobs you know so. <laughs> yeah well if I could sing and write and do all the things that Phil does I would be uh, quite happy to be doing that I'm sure he doesn't lie awake uh, worrying about whether he gets asked to do bass sessions. It's not what you told me earlier on. No, <laughs> no I mean, I, obviously, I mean, I, it would be nice to work with the amount of people that say Neil has, but, you know, some, Neil has it. Let's, let's, have a look, let's go into another video. Let's have a look. This is Iron Maiden coming out. This is Number of the Beast. That was 666 Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden. I'm here in the studio with Amanda Neil and Phil Lynott. I ask you guys, you ever thought about giving up rock and roll, sort of going into something like healthy, like gardening or TV presenting? Or TV presenting? No, but have you? Um, I suppose I'll be faced with that choice soon when I get too old to rock. And no, roll. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. I'd, I, it's something that gets in, into your blood. So yeah. It'd be very hard to give it up yeah, and I do something imagine. else. But this looks like quite a nice setup. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, chaps, tell me finally, you've got a reputation in London particularly for being party goers, meaning that you're out every night making the scene. Now, I know for a fact you were at Bon Jovi last night. I'm not sure where you were, but I'm sure it wasn't somewhere. Good. I was recovering, yeah. I was recovering from the night before. Would you say it's justified your reputation as party goers? Well, yeah, we'd rather be out being sociable, you know, and uh, keeping up with the new bands and whatever than sitting in front of the TV watching Sky Show. No, no. Oh, where are you going Sorry, tonight? Where are you going thing. tonight after the show then? Um, I'm enough. recovering from last night, oh, actually. Yeah. You're not going we have to, to compare notes. There's several days on tonight, so we have to <laughs> decide on which is the, the most socially acceptable one. Go to one the mall. Go to the mall, dear. No, no. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a whole etiquette about uh, where you go in London, you know. <laughs> there's certain nights you don't go to certain clubs, you know, so... Oh, well... I mean, we know this by experience. <laughs> Phil, thank you very much. Cheers, thanks, please. Neil Murray. Thank you. Mick, you'll be back with us next week. I will. Yeah? Thanks very much, boys. And next week, I'm going to have Ron Kill in the studio and a brilliant, the best competition ever on Skytrax. And Mick will be back with me. Yep. Goodbye. See you next week. Don't forget to keep sending the slogans. I'm going to read some more out next week. Kill to take us out with Right to Rock.